All right. Well, welcome, welcome to Ask Coach Pamela Anything. I see some wonderful friends here. Thank you guys so much for hopping on and joining me. And um, I'm curious to see what your questions are. But I'd love to start every Zoom call with one cycle of the 555 breathing. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's for myself or if it's for any of you, but uh, let's just start with that. So in for five and then hold for five and release for five. Ready? In. Hold. And release. And then I always have to dance a little bit at the end because it's, it's the, it's just the best thing. And it's the simplest thing. And sometimes we just forget. So if you can just set yourself some reminders on your phone, um, leave yourself some post-it notes, get into the habit of like each time you go into the bathroom, you do a cycle each time you get before you um, start the car up, you do a cycle, really set your intent to um, follow up on such a wonderful, awesome habit, such as the five like breathing and it's free it costs you nothing and the benefits are crazy and so speaking of um, benefits if you guys don't understand what this does to you putting your hands in a victory pose like you just crossed the finish line of an amazing race it sends a whole shot of dopamine into your body it, it's just that simple thing it's a free drug why not light yourself up with doing a little bit more of that and if you haven't read, um, uh, I think Mel Robbins has a new book out. Um, I've forgotten the exact name of it. But basically, you look in the mirror and you give yourself a high five. Why do we give others high fives, but we don't give ourselves high fives? It's a great habit to get into because that also sends a, 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 a jolt of goodness, of good feelings all the way through your body. So give yourselves these things. You, you'd give your best friend a high five. So give yourselves some high fives for doing things right. And really, really enjoy, enjoy what you're doing. Um, have fun with life. Um, that's my main message. Really slow down and have more fun. All you have is like right now. This minute right now. Oh, and now right now. Oh, oh right now. So I appreciate that you took the time to join me here. If you do have questions, you can raise your hand. The um, icon is somewhere down on the bottom. It's so funny because I don't even know where it is because I only host the meetings. I never really attend meetings where I have to raise my hand. But um, if you do have some questions, go ahead. It's really like, ask me anything. Lately, I have been, um, if you guys don't know my story, I became a Wild Fit coach uh, after I did Wild Fit in 2018. So then um, 2019 was a year of total growth of my new business. I never had a business before this. I just kind of fell into it. And it has been the joy of my life. And um, last year at Christmas, uh, New Year's, uh, my husband and I decided to sell our home in Alaska. And we did so in August of uh, 2021 and uh, have been traveling ever since. So I see some of you here that have invited me to your homes wherever you are across the world. And I look forward to meeting as many people as I can. Um, the only one here that I've met in person is Jerry. <laughs> and it's so funny because um, I, I often go um, to Boston. My daughter's in Somerville, just outside of Boston. Jerry is just south of Boston. And we never hooked up all the time we were there. But I was in Florida, she was in Florida, and we hooked up there. So you know what? Good thing we all have cell phones. You can stay connected because you never know where you're going to meet up with Coach Pamela. I look forward to meeting many more of you. So um, in, in general, this new lifestyle of mine has brought much clarity of living wild fit. And um, some of that is um, really focusing because I'm in a different kitchen all the time. All right. Right now I am on the Jersey shore. I just was spending uh, five weeks in Cancun, which was amazing. And so I love, love, love the ocean, but my kitchen is different all the time. So uh, coming up with ways to cook, I, the, the, the cooking utensils are different each time. This kitchen doesn't have a vegetable peeler. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so guess what's now on my list of things I travel with a vegetable peeler. Anyhow, um, um, coming up with a set foods that I can buy at a grocery store pretty much anywhere, those vegetables that I just adore that are easy to make and um, coming up with a new repertoire, but also storing those vegetables and cleaning those vegetables. And it, it, it's just so different each time. 
One of the things I've so loved though, is that I feel younger because there's no autopilot. I don't like, you know, just walk into, you know, I don't go to the same grocery store and buy the same things and prep them the same way because I have to do them differently all the time. So there's having to think of new ways and new options keeps that mind very, very young, keeps you thinking new ways. And I really long to uh, continue this lifestyle to see um, how much fun and how much longevity I am creating in my life. And I encourage you guys to do that also. So step away from the autopilot and come up with new ways to do things. Even if it's, um, I often suggest um, going up a set of stairs backwards. You have to think so carefully about those stairs. It is really good for you. And then I'd suggest go, when you go back down, take them two at a time. It's wicked good for your legs. Okay, skip every other step. So, but hold on to the railing, please. <laughs> All right, still no questions for me? Anybody wanna raise their hand wildly? Karen, Karen, are you Michael? And Michael is Karen? I muted you, my friend, here, let's see. No, you have another Karen on there. Oh, okay. That's not, that's not you, that's, a, no. I see you over there. So, who, so Miss, uh, Mr. Karen, I, I muted you, so you have to hit unmute if you wanna ask your question. There you go. Are we uh, talking, am I talking? No, I'm trying to get Karen who had his, had his hand up. Okay. Oh, no, I'll set them. All right, My, uh, Karen, Michael, do you have a question? And then we'll go to Vicki. Um, let's hmm. see. It's been so I, long since I spoke with you. I know, what? I know. Um, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm still doing the um, one meal a day. And that seems to really be working out for me with my intermittent fasting, I'd like it a lot. I feel, I feel like I'm releasing the weight that I was, I'm getting the wiggle room that I wanted. <laughs> I love that term. I love that term. And thank you so much for coming up with that term. It's perfectly so. Oh, any question? Um, I was really looking forward to other people's questions. Like, all right, well, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure we'll have, have some. I'll raise my hand if I come up with something. Okay, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> oh, wait, I've got one. Okay. I, heard, I heard from someone, some podcast that said coffee does not break a fast. Now I know the take on coffee, et cetera, et cetera, but black coffee does not break a fast. I would say, you know, there's no rules. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's no, nobody has the official book on how to fast. It's all individual for us. Just like how you've found your balance with intermittent fasting. Um, so yeah, if you want to have a liquid and consider that you're still fasting, then go for it. For instance, I, you know, I enjoy having bone broth when I'm fasting. I'm sure there's some persons that say, no, if it's not water, then you've broken your fast. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll look forward you to your You are so very welcome. Okay. So, Mr. Karen, with your phone, do you want to give us a try, see if we can hear you? Can't hear you, so maybe you want to log out and log back in and then see if that happens, if, if you can uh, then, if you can then hear you. We'll tune back to you. Okay, Miss Vicki, hello. I'm very, I'm really, hello. Uh, it's hello. been milked. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> um, I guess I, I'm sort of in a bit of a flux, a flux position at the moment. So I've um, continued from my WellFit journey and I have released 100 pounds now since April last year, which is wonderful and amazing. Um, but I still have quite a long way to go. Uh, but my cycles are in a little bit of flux because I'm, you know, getting towards that age. Um, 
and I'm struggling with the balance between being gentle with my system and giving what it needs and the fact that I'm really carb sensitive. Um, and I've broadly been exactly where I am, not moving on the scale at all, no matter how infrequently I'm weighing myself um, since uh, January, mid-January. Um, and so I've, so I've tried, you know, having a bit more in terms of, you know, a, a mild spring and I've popped into winter and I've popped into summer and I've come back out again. And then I've tried going deeper because it wasn't working and that didn't work either. And I'm just a bit torn between should I be, you know, where, where shall I be pitching myself here? Because it's, yeah, it's all got a bit, it's got a bit static. And I've, I've done my checklist, I've got my alkalizer, I've got my water and I'm breathing and I'm doing, you know, exercise and I'm all the things that I feel like I'm, I should be making sure I'm not doing, but I've hit a bit of a, a brick wall. Well, first of all, wow, congratulations. That is amazing. So look at everybody here cheering you on. It is just wonderful to hear that. So we are so happy for you. Um, for everybody here, I really encourage you to look at a plateau in a new way, okay? Because there is so much um, going on with this miraculous, amazing, brilliant, 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 brilliant body that um, sometimes it just needs a little bit of time to catch up. So I encourage you to look at a, a plateau as time for the insides of your body to catch up with the outsides of your body. Okay, maybe your body is saying, um, my skin needs a little bit more time to, you know, adapt and adjust and, and get into this new size. Maybe your pancreas suddenly is like, wow, I'm working differently and I need some healing time over here. So really honor this and know that you're in it for the long run, not for a number that's on the scale. Um, where, where are you from, Miss Vicky? I'm in the UK. Okay. Um, I could have guessed, but you never know. People have accents everywhere in the world. But anyhow, um, what I might suggest, um, which I often do for people in the US, is to switch their scale over to um, kilograms. Why don't you switch yours over to pounds? Come up with a whole new number over there. It's going to kind of like go mess with your head for a little bit. And that's the whole point. Because the number actually on the scale isn't what we're going for. We're going for health and wellness. So just mess with the scale for a little bit and play with some new numbers and see what that might do for you. Yeah. But also, also, you know, um, you know, you're doing everything right. And th there's another factor here too. It's winter. <laughs> it's a little bit colder. Your body wants a little bit of buffer and it probably is like, I, I'm kind of nice at this temperature. Don't mess with me. So give it some time as the days get longer and you want to move more, there's a little bit more sunshine. You want, might want to check um, that you're having a little bit of extra vitamin D, um, taking it at night just before bed because it is a hormone, might really help us, that sunshine uh, vitamin. And, um, and even looking at, at your vitamin C, you might just need to up those a little bit for those darker months. And really, wow, congratulations. It hasn't even been a year, right? As you said, since April? Yeah, yeah. We started uh, mid-April last year. So, yes, just, just continue to be patient. And, um, and, and you're, you're on the right path. You have all of the tools. So just continue on. And uh, let me know in, you know, um, I'm going to have another call uh, in like two weeks, just like this yep. here. And uh, just see, see if, 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 if playing with that scale might change something and, um, and really stepping away from uh, that number that you want in your head because you're, you're making it happen. Yeah. What an inspiration. Well, we're off, on, we're off on holiday next week, somewhere a bit warmer and sunnier. So I shall top up my vitamin C there as well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you so very much. I hope I, I, I helped you out a little bit. Thank you. Good reminders. Okay. All right, then we had, I thought I saw Tia had her hand up, but, oh, Karen, Karen with, uh, with your microphone, are you able to now speak to us? Otherwise I'm gonna go to uh, Greta, then Jerry, then Lewis. Oh, well, I'm gonna, you're muted, my friend, Karen. Oh. 
Sorry, still can't hear you. All right. Okay. So, Miss Greta, you're you're in the um, um, uh, witness protection program there. <laughs> you're all blacked out. Can't see you. What is your question, my dear? There you go. Yes, my question is, um, I, I lost about um, 40 pounds initially during program. Um, I never was a sweet eater, but I learned so much and really modified um, my way of looking at food. At this point, what I find is I have plateaued and it doesn't matter whether I do deep spring or whatever I do, I'm just at the same weight. And I guess what I'm trying to figure out is I've tried coming out of deep spring and, and added some fruits and that kind of stuff. I'm only probably having at the max two meals a day. Um, and I'm doing some of the intermittent fasting as well, but I seem to be stuck. <laughs> well, this seems to be a little bit of a theme. <laughs> So, 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 so again, I would, I would suggest some of this, of the same things is, you know, um, um, you might want to switch your scale from pounds to kilos or kilos to pounds or whatever. Um, see, see if, if just really changing that up helps give yourself some time, uh, see if you can get outside a little bit more to really get, um, some more sunlight. I don't know, uh, you know, where you are in the world, but really these winter colder months with the shorter days really do take a toll on us and as a seasonal type thing it's not just the food that we eat it is also the length of the days and that stuff we you know living in Alaska I'll tell you June you have energy galore December you might as well just hibernate <laughs> especially once the holidays are done you know you, you, just, you need January just to sleep so you know it, it's it's just different in different parts of the world but um, allow that to be okay and to find your balance and and celebrate 40 pounds that is awesome so um, the same hints that 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 I gave to Vicky you know um, um, per, pertain oops hold on where is that noise coming from um and just really um, taking the time to, to find the things that make you happy, okay? So sometimes we're seeking a little bit more variety, variety hunger. We're seeking a little bit more sweetness um, from that sugar monster. So finding sweetness in our life, not through food, and finding variety in our life, not just through food, is some, a couple of ways to really expand and to feel good about where you're at. Because the more, the more for everybody here, the more happier you are with where you're at, the easier it is to get to where you want to go. So be happy now. Really enjoy your, your life and how far you've gotten and the vision that you are creating right now, that you are bringing into reality. You're that much closer. Look at the people that just started in you know, 2022. Oh, I'm going to make health my priority on January 1st. And you've already done it. Yeah. The only thing with that is that um, I, I have a lot of medical issues and my arthritis, which was a major one, um, practically went away within the first three months. But now I'm starting to get symptoms again and I'm, I'm wondering if the plateauing is my body not reacting to the food the way it was before. And I live in Florida, so, you know, it's not that I don't get sunlight and I don't get exercise, you know, so I'm, I'm just wondering, um, is it the type of vegetables or, or what it is that, that is causing me to feel stuck? Well, some of, some of the things is, um, first of all, is your, is, not just you, but everybody here is being so mindful of our language. So the more you talk about being stuck, the more stuck you are. So in seeking, <laughs> seeking ways, seeking ways that are things that are going so well for you, you know, and really focusing on that, what's going right, what's going right, what's going right, so that you can get there rather than being stuck in that old story, because stuck, stuck, stuck 
keeps you stuck, stuck, stuck. You get more of it. Right. But, but like I said, you, you've already stepped towards it. You're looking at things. And the, there's another little bit of a factor of um, the more you clean up your body, the more, the more it wants to be cleaned up. So you get, you get to a level in wild fit and you've, you know, you've taken a break from these foods and your body loved it and it thrived. Well, now it's getting a little pickier. It's saying, okay, well, I put up with some of these borderline foods before, but now they're not as beneficial for my body as these foods are. So there's another level sort of of you to learn about food and to, um, um, really pay attention to how your body is reacting to that food so that you can find your optimum. So I'll, I'll tell you just a quick story. For me, it was red peppers. Red pepper soup was one of my favorites. I just, I loved red peppers. I just, I, I, I had them often. And then after like a year of wild fit, my body went, no, I don't think we like these red peppers. I'm like, what? No, I love red pepper soup. Don't you remember? I love red pepper soup. But it just stopped agreeing with me. And I finally, I can now have, if I have some tiny dices of red pepper in a salad, that's it. Or a couple little slices dipped in hummus. But that's it. I, I just can't, I, I really don't have red peppers anymore. So your body fine tunes itself. You know, it got a certain level, but now it's like, hmm. Well, I want a little bit more. So tuning into that, what, you know, um, that, that means like paying attention to the food timeline after you eat to really find, oh my goodness, look at, I have, suddenly I feel like really great. I slept really well. Um, I have good energy. I have great clarity. What did I eat? I want to repeat that. Or an hour after a meal, if you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired you know, what happened? And I have a little bit of headache and I'm kind of moody. What did you eat? And paying attention to those things and fine tuning it even that much more. So that's what I, that's what I suggest for you. If that helps a little bit. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here. Congratulations again. I love hearing these nice success stories. Miss, we'll go to Jerry and then Lewis. That's okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Pamela, thank you for doing this extra bonus class for us. Uh, we are all in this together and we are all at different stages, but we all have so much in common. It's unbelievable. Uh, Greta, congratulations on your loss. Vicki, outstanding 100 pounds. That is my actual goal. And I have 30 more to release to get to that goal. And my target was, I started March 22nd of last year. Um, like yourself, I hit plateaus. Uh, I am in a plateau right now, despite being in this five-week reset and release, but like Pamela said, it's not just the scale. And Pamela, I loved your tip yesterday of putting a little sticky note in your shoe. And I did that this morning, <laughs> which was awesome. Uh, again, changing the mindset, but I've been in a, in a plateau for a while, but the scale may not have moved or it may be going up and down two to three pounds, the same two to three pounds, but the physical changes are still happening. The pant sizes, the looser fitting clothing, the energy level still continues to come despite the scale not moving. And I think all of us at some point in time have hit a plateau um, and start thinking, what am I doing wrong? What, you know, what do I need to do? To, what do I need to change? And one of the things that some of us have done is we've gone back and started to listening to Wild Fit from the beginning again, um, because no matter how many times you hear it, you hear something different every single time. And I know that's helping many of us right now just to be able to go back and do that. Um, and you can you know, pick up wherever you want, essentially, because we all own the recordings. We can go to any single one and, and listen to any one of them at any single time. Um, so I just wanted to share that with the group um, and again, say thank you. And to say happy birthday, Miss Emma Morrison. <laughs> Where are you, Emma? Thank you. Yes, it's my 50th birthday today, so it's lovely to be able to join this call. Welcome so. to the club. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. And um, for anybody um, 
um, that kind of missed the reference. What I mentioned in um, a coaching call yesterday with my uh, five week reset and release tribe is that sometimes you can just put, this isn't even my original idea, but what ideas are really ever original? This comes from um, uh, one of my very first uh, clients, Cher, who also has lost over a uh, hundred pounds. And she says, um, take a post-it note, put the number that you want to see on the scale and put it in your shoe so that you're stepping on it all the time. And then if she even recommends put it right on your refrigerator, put it in a couple other places. So you're seeing the number you want all the time. Instead of looking at the scale and seeing the number you don't want. So it's, it's just a great, a great little thing. Just put it on a post-it note, slide it into your shoe. And then, so you're stepping on it all the time. It's a subliminal message that, and those little things work. And uh, what Jerry mentioned also is, you know, re-watching Eric's videos. He is so positive and while it works and his messages are so powerful and he just, he just cares and going back and really listening to those, like she said, there's always something more that you've missed and you own those. So whenever you need a boost, go back and listen to them. And if you haven't seen many of his, uh, Eric's, um, talks that he did at a fest which is um uh, awesome fest by mind valley and um some of his other things he has a couple other great talks getting younger every year is one of them um i forget what they're all called but there's some great great talks and if you miss listening to him he has some powerful messages that you can find on youtube okay thank you so much jerry and again happy birthday emma <laughs> all right lewis hello Hello everyone. Um, I'm Louis from South Africa. Good evening. Mm -hmm. It's evening time here. Yeah, this is my wildfit partner, Richard. Hello. I just wanted to Hello, say Richard. thank. Hello, Richard. Just wanted to say nice to meet you guys. Um, I just like to just tell you about my journey in wildfit. Um, we started the intake in August last year. We stayed very really committed to the program, completely disciplined, and uh, I released about thirty-five pounds. Richard released about 40 pounds. Um, I, I felt the success of all the non-scalable victories. My blood pressure was out. My sugar was out. My cholesterol was out. After the 90 days, everything was back in line. But since finishing the, the program in December, um, I think I made one, one or two fatal mistakes, which was I never set my, my ratios and I never built my tables. So... You know, I became a little bit complacent, sugar monster popping out, trying different foods and started to forget really all the benefits of wild fit, you know, having those deep sleeps, the energy levels. And it's gone three months now. Richard sort of still maintained his weight. He's dropped a bit. He still wants to release about another 10 pounds. I still want to release about another 25 pounds. But I'm finding it very difficult to snap back into living the wild fit lifestyle. So I might do it two or three days and then obviously I'm eating the grains, eating the chocolates and stuff like that. I'm battling a bit of that. Um, I am back in the gym though. We are training quite hard. So that's one positive that came out of it. Uh, I'm just maybe, I try to go back and start the 90 day program again with the videos, but I struggled in the first three weeks, obviously waiting to get to that deep spring season. So maybe some advice from you as to what I should do. Should I just slip through it back into autumn and then snap back into deep spring or should I just get back into deep spring? I don't know. I need some advice. <laughs> Thanks. Certainly. And these are excellent, excellent questions. So um, about ratios, you know, they, they can really be anything, um, whether you take um, um, a week and you do, you know, five days of spring. And then on the weekend, you maybe just do fall or summer um, or, or any of that, or you take a whole month and you do, you know, two weeks of spring and then a week of wild fit summer and a week of wild fit fall, whatever it is, just to get you into spring and out of spring and into spring and out of spring and into spring and out of spring. Because the more you um, go from sugar burning mode, which is fall when we have all those abundant fruits and vegetables. And if anybody has any questions, like you're not quite sure about what each of the seasons are, I have, I did a wonderful workshop that um, you can find on YouTube called the Wild Fit Seasons, okay? Pamela LaPointe, Wildly Vibrant YouTube channel. And there's a, there's a um, hour long workshop on the seasons. I talk 
specifically about what each wild fit season is, and that will probably answer a lot of your questions. But going back to ratios, it is so personal. But where I would say, um, if you are thinking about redoing the um, videos, it is hard to go back to the beginning when you, you're not making any changes. A good place to start is week four. Okay, week four, you're still you're in wild at fall. This is what you've done. You've added breathing. You've added hydration. You've um, taken a break from sugar. You've added in the alkagizer. And then you've taken a break from grains and dairy. Well, let's not forget about dairy. It's kind of the same week in week four. So you've added some good things in. You've taken a break from a few things. And that's a great place to start with watching the videos and then going from there so that you are still having abundant fruit and abundant root vegetables, those sweeter things. So week four and week five, you still have those things. And then week six, you go into wild fit, week six, you go into wild fit spring. So the, for me as a coach, that's often what I recommend people to do because it, it um, you don't necessarily want to go back to the very, very beginning unless you're with a tribe. Jerry was mentioning it because there, there's a great big um, group that started and did it together. That's always a good thing too, is to get, get some more people involved. Um, so that's a good place to start. And whenever you're in doubt, here's the wild fit rule that sometimes we forget about. Rule, sorry, guideline, suggestion that we often forget about. It's more important to get the good things in than take the bad things out. So definitely increasing your water, making sure you're putting a little bit of um, a, a, a pinch of sea salt for the essential minerals. Doing your five by five breathing, getting out into nature, getting some intentional movement in and adding in the alkalizer. And if, if you're tired of the alkalizer, then making some nice um, soups, uh, nice big green veggie soups as an alternative. But just starting from there and getting those good things in and focusing on that and all that you've already achieved, again, Thank you, younger self, for deciding to do well for, and for finding this. Thank you. <laughs> you are so very welcome. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Pamela. And good luck. Okay. And now we'll go to Tia. Hello. She's testing me with her last right. name only. Right. Perfect timing. We just got to our destination. So I'm not driving right now. Anyways, um, so I've gained back all my weight that I lost at Wild Fit, which is super awesome. Not. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going through your reset and release that I was a part of um, back in the summertime. And I just had a question, like, why do we not have as much protein in the fall? And I noticed okay, on wild fit, like, answer. I'm tired all the time. Like I feel, I just feel tired. <laughs> and I don't know if it's like, like I eat and then I want to sleep. So Tia, where are you in the world? Colorado. So we have lots Col of sun. Yeah, I see that behind you. It looks quite gorgeous. <laughs> Ethan, you need to stay over here. <laughs> okay. So, you know, a, a, a few things are really just focusing on on what's going right and what you have learned and just like what, what I said um, for Louis and Richard you know um, getting back to the basics always just start with the breathing and increasing your hydration especially in Colorado where you've got the elevation you need even more water and more water and oh, yeah. more water so um, um, just finding that balance now if, if you are tired after a meal there's two things to pay attention to what did you eat that your body's that your body is saying, oh my God, this is taking so much of my energy just to digest. You better sit down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're eating something that's just sitting there that's not easily digested. So take a photo of your meal and then take set your timer for a, an hour after the meal. Check in with your body by asking, you know, how's my mood? How's my mental? You know, how's my energy? How's how's my thinking and my focus? Um, all of that stuff. Checking in with all of that, 
to determine if what you ate is supporting you in your longevity or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it does take time. Right. But I don't, I just am not really like, like a time person. I just want it now. <laughs> oh, oh, anybody else feel this way? Right. Well, I know like no. patience is a virtue. I just don't have time for that. <laughs> and, and you don't even want it now. You wanted it yesterday. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> So you are not, you're not alone in that. And that's, that's part of our whole adventure of this life is really, um, my message is always slow down. You only have mm -hmm. now, especially, you know, I hear you talking to Ethan there. How old is Ethan? He's three. Three. Okay. He doesn't you, slow down. <laughs> right. He doesn't, but, but that doesn't mean that you can't breathe and watch and enjoy him. And right. really just give yourself that same patience, you know, as Ethan um, has learned to walk and he's learned now to run and to never stop. And he's going to learn how to ride a bike and he's going to maybe want to play the piano. And maybe he's going to want to uh, learn to do archery and, you know, all of these things. And you're going to give him the same advice. It's okay. Give yourself time. It takes a while mm -hmm. to learn to ride a bike. Try again. And then say the same things to yourself. It's okay. Right. You tried it. You know, you, you learned what worked, what didn't. Just keep mm -hmm. trying. You're still okay. learning to ride the bike. And it, it's, right. it's, not, it's not going anywhere. So you, mm -hmm. you, you have the, the little bit of the tools. It's just picking them up and actually using them. Right, exactly. And I'm reading this amazing book that is kind of like Wild Fit. It's called Grow a New Body. I don't know if you guys have heard it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it has a lot of the Wild Fit principles, but they add like the spiritual part into it if anybody's interested in that. But it has been pretty amazing. He wants you to take a thousand supplements that I don't have money for. <laughs> so, but well, it's still... It's still a good book. It like talks about how, like exactly like um, Eric talks about, you know, like changing everything in your life. So just if somebody wants to read something. <laughs> so, but also like, why, why do you not eat so much meat during wild fit or during oh, winter or not right. winter, fall? Sorry. <laughs> okay. So in general, um, back to the Hadsman and where Eric really came up with the ideas for wild fit, really getting back to what our bodies were created for. Um, they would go out and in the spring, after a long winter drought and not having much food, the new babies would be born. There'd be a lot of wildlife they would um, hunt. And then there wasn't that much growth because it had been a winter. Um, and, and then suddenly um, more of the green, the greens are the first things to come up. And then later um, the, the berries and all that and then in wild fit summer. And then by fall, oh my goodness, there was a abundant amount of fruits on trees and um, plants in the garden and all this stuff. So who needed to hunt? Sure. Why waste all of that energy to go out for hours and days and days to hunt when you had all the food in your village right there? Mm -hmm. So that's why there was less hunting. There was less meat in wild fall because there was such an abundance of other foods and nutrients to eat. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for answering again, that. And thank again, you for doing this call. Again, you might want to um, go onto YouTube and look for that wild fit seasons. It does talk a little, a little bit more. Yeah, I was going to look at that more. So, okay. all right. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day. You, you also in Colorado, Sunny. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hi, Miss Karen. You have a question? I have a comment. Um, you, you know that I've been talking to you probably for the last month about being stuck at a plateau. And I, regardless of what I did, it was, I was stuck at a number and I wanted wiggle room. So um, I took the wild fit or the mind Valley course on intermittent fasting. Okay. And I got up to eating 60, no, fasting 16 hours every day and eating for eight. And that still didn't work for me. So I went up to 20 hours fasting and eating for four. So I slowly got it 
I had to even um, er, manipulate that. But the intermittent fasting for me really works. And Mind Valley does have a course on it. I would suggest that people that are stuck look at intermittent fasting. That's just my experience. Thank you very, very much. Um, I, um, I agree. There's so many different ways. And if anybody, I'll just give you a quick explanation of intermittent fasting because there is so much information out there. There's some great YouTube videos. Um, as, as Karen had mentioned, um, um, WildFit has a, a Mind Valley. Um, has that class. I haven't um, watched it myself, but intermittent fasting is um, you have a window of eating. So let's just say you stop eating at eight o'clock at night, and then you don't start eating until eight o'clock in the next morning. So you, always for 12 hours, you don't have that. And then you shorten it a little bit. And what happens is in the shorten it a little bit, it's really, it, there's, there's no goal of where you're trying to get to it, but it's setting a routine for your body so that it knows, oh, I've now hit like six o'clock at night. I'm done with digesting food. As soon as this is done, I get to you know move into this mode and, and we're getting ready for bed and we're setting this up. So it, it's, it's like training um, uh, your, your, your child. We go to bed at this time. We wake up at this time. We go. So you're telling your body, I get to go to sleep at this time. I'm done digesting. And then you shorten it a little bit to see if that window doesn't help you um, set some guidelines for your body to optimize itself. So thank you very much. It's a great, great hint. And I've had many clients find some great success once they found intermittent fasting and, and closing that window of eating. Great. Ms. Christian from early in California. And then we'll finish up with Patricia and then I'm going to close up the meeting. You're almost unmuted. Oh. There we go. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> there you are. You moved. Okay. I'm not stuck. Um, <laughs> I just thought I'd share. Uh, a handful of you already know. I was put on a diet when I was 14 by my own parents to lose 20 pounds. And it screwed me up for the next 54 years. Um, yes, I'm that old. And during Wild Fit last year, I released about 40 pounds from my lifetime high. I am down 102 pounds. I still, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I, before I discovered Wild Fit, I had told a friend of mine whose mother at age 80 was going on this South Beach diet again. And I went, and I was 60 then. I went, if I go on a diet again at age 80, shoot me. I'm done, right? So I had already decided no more diets. And anyone who has struggled with body size, you know the abuse you get from the medical establishment, just all that crap. And I am so done with it, done with it. So I deliberately, with a substantial weight loss during my first wild fit, went, let's just hang here and see what living is like. And, and what I was aware of was, so I'm now in a range I haven't been at in 25, 30 years. And I deliberately wanted to give my body a chance to just comprehend this. My question is, I'm now, and I've just continued wild fit. I have not been meticulous about seasons, which is why I am thrilled to be doing Eric's challenge again and just do it with a great herd of human beings who are magnificent. Um, so now I am being um, perfect about it. I love perfection. So my question is, though, I'm having the little effects that I did that were detox a year ago, like skin issues, you know what I mean? Just so my question is, is the, the weight that I'm carrying that traveled along with me for many years and I lost it and gained it, and da, 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 is it older and it's carrying older toxins? So that's it is, isn't it? I'll be damned. 
<laughs> okay, so essentially I'm gonna travel through this same collection of stuff except with experience and wisdom. Okay. Yes, very well said. So um, there's always another layer, you know, it's just like in life. Uh, oh, oh, I thought I had things figured out. <laughs> <laughs> let me give you let me give you some new experiences then <laughs> you know so um yeah our cells have all that crap stored in there um and so and 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 there's also for anybody here there's also emotions stored in there yes. so you know um yes. I'd like to give an example you know you you've had a shoulder uh, surgery I, I am lucky enough to not have had that but um so you've had a, a shoulder injury so the things that are stored in there are the pain, is the injury, is the drugs that you had, is the surgery, is is all of that stuff is is in there. And um, at, as you uh, rejuvenate and you create new cells and you allow the old cells to go, that comes back up. If you had a scar, it might come back to the surface. It might itch again. You might feel the effects from the drugs. It is okay. crazy. You might have the same moodiness that you had when, when it occurred. Um, you might feel the same dread or the same, it, it's, it's crazy. So the more you can release those things and know with your wisdom, with your knowledge, oh, it's just passing through me, yeah. never to be seen again or felt again <laughs> exactly. or experienced again. Yeah. Okay. It is crazy, crazy. And, I, and I'll tell you another uh, a quick story for anybody that doesn't know. Um, I had on, on my arm from when my son was born and he is now 26. He was one years old. We were living in Hawaii. I um, um, had glasses to see and so had not, uh, and then had contacts. So I did not have my eyes open while I was swimming in the ocean. Okay, because I was wearing contacts. And I swam directly into a nest of man o -wars. Good. And I came up with one attached to my arm. <laughs> but I come running out, that thing is still attached to me. And I had I had a scar, all of those tentacles right around. It looked like a, it looked like a, it looked like a really nice tattoo. And that thing was dark. And, and when I would get a little bit of the tan, it would get even darker. I did well with it and it started fading. 20, so I did well with it, you know, whatever. So I'd had it for 24 years. It started fading. You can't even see it anymore. You can't even see it anymore. Crazy. Crazy. Our bodies want to rejuvenate. They want to regenerate. They want to have those new cells. They are creating those new cells all the time. But the easier that you can release the old, then the quicker you and um, embrace the new. So it is It is happening to us. And thank you so very much. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff stored in there. And if you feel those weird emotions, you feel like, oh my God, I, I actually feel like I'm, I'm drugged a little bit. Perhaps you are, but it's leaving your system. It's leaving your system. So thank you for a great story and congratulations on your mindset. It's always lovely, lovely, lovely to see you here. Thank you, Pamela. We'll Thanks. finish up with Patricia. And again, um, I, I'm going to have a, um, <clears throat> a call next week, this exact same time on Tuesday and the week after. And um, I am going to be running a new five week reset and release um, at the end of March. Um, I'm going on a cruise at the beginning of March out of Fort Lauderdale. I'm so excited. And for anybody that knows um, Abraham Hicks, one of my very favorite um, persons I follow, very positive, designing your life um, by being positive. And it's the Abraham Hicks cruise I'm going on. So I am super, super excited in March. Anyhow, um, after that cruise is done, uh, I will start another five week reset and release. If you guys want to learn more about that, you can find out about that in my website. Okay, um, I'm going to finish up with Patricia. That's Hello, Pamela. That's the one who's coming. She has had a Zoom call. Oh, so. oh. somebody's not muted. <laughs> All right. I got it. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, enjoy your cruise. Sounds uh, you. sounds very lovely. Um, I was uh, a little bit surprised by your last remark before the cruise stuff uh, because I had some some issues with my neck like ten years ago, and I'm actually at the same weight I was ten years ago. So things are coming back. So maybe I should not go to, to the doctor yet and just wait it out. 
Um, but I was wondering something else. I did the, the, the 90-day challenge last year, February, so it's about a year ago that I started. Um, pretty much stayed on course, did not gain any more weight, and now I thought, okay, I really have to deep dive back in because I still want to lose uh, another 25 uh, pounds. Uh, I lost 25 pounds last year, which I was really happy with. Um, but what I noticed, and I also noticed a little bit last time, uh, I released much more weight much easier when I'm still eating fruit uh, and not actually in spring. Um, would it be better then for me to just keep eating the fruit or should I just stay in spring longer until it finally does release all the fat? I love this question. <laughs> well, <laughs> because, let me ask it. <laughs> because this just brings up such an amazing point for anybody here that also felt that way. Oh my God, I, I, I so much enjoyed being in well fit fall or even well fit summer where you're um, having smaller amounts of fruit and root vegetables. Um, that's a signal from your body. Spend more time there. Your body likes it. And when then your body is feels safe and so drops that extra backpack. So yep. spend more time there yep. and really savor it and go, and, and, and taste those, the amazing variety with all of those fruits and um, all of those nice sweet vegetables. If, if that's when your body really sweet, celebrate it and spend more time there. Okay, then I will definitely go back there because I, I wasn't eating much bread and potatoes and things like that anyway. So that's, that's fine to not eat, but then, then I will stick to, to fruit in the morning and then the rest of the day, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm eating clean anyways. I never used any pots and sachets and things, I mean. I, I, that's just not how the way I cook, but yeah, the fruit makes it much more easy for me to release than, uh, than in spring. Oh. Great, great question to end on. And I will let anybody else also know the other key factor here is when you're in well fit summer, which includes some fruits or well fit spring, um, fall, which includes abundant fruits, um, really, um, I, I feel strongly about having it on an empty stomach. It's just such a great way to start the day. It does just digest so quickly through your body and you can get those nutrients right away. And then um, also um, maybe um, really focusing on the last meal of the day, making sure that you have some of the sweeter um, fruits and vegetables, I mean, some of the sweeter root vegetables because our bodies make our hormones at night and having a little bit of that carb stronger snack at night and the last meal of the day helps us to sleep better it helps us to make those hormones in a little bit easier way so even when in spring for anybody that enjoys being in spring having a bit of the middle foods that last meal of the day can make a huge huge difference if you don't know about the nighttime snack having some squash with some um, a good portion of um, a healthy oil like coconut oil, having some a little bit of um, coconut milk, maybe some cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger to warm it up. Yeah, having it as a little bit of a uh, porridge as a nighttime snack can make a huge difference in our sleep and, and staying in well fit spring. So those are just a couple of different hints. Thank you so much, Patricia. That's a great question. Yes, sure. it's your body <laughs> giving you a hint. It's your body giving you a hint. Hello, I told you I'm happy over here yes. with the fruits. So Next to fruits. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Um, so my call next Tuesday um, is going to be, it's going to have a different link. Um, it's going to have a register, uh, register only link. Um, the topic is going to be um, when I say, you know, well, tune into your body and listen to what it says. I get so many questions. What the heck does that mean? So I'm going to talk about that. Um, I don't have a good name. So if anybody has a good name that I can call the workshop, um, that's the topic is checking in on the food timeline and checking in with our body so that we actually know what does that mean? What are you looking for? What are the signs so that we can find what our optimum um, food uh, is for our unique bodies? Because just because red peppers don't suit Pamela, body very well. It doesn't mean that, you know, Emma might thrive on them. Okay. And one of my very favorite things is, is cucumbers. I have some clients that are like, I, I can't do cucumbers. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness. I like live on cucumbers and avocados. And if there's an avocado shortage, I'm going to be really bummed. I don't believe everything that the, the I don't believe everything that the news says though. Right. 
All right, um, if you all want you to be, um, unmute. Yeah, will yeah. you be sharing the link of the video? Because next uh, next week I'll have to work. It's, I'm on holiday this week and I'd love to see it. Yes, yes, yes. For all of them, I will be recording them and sharing the links. So next week will be time, uh, the food timeline and um, tuning into your body, learning with that. And then in two weeks, <clears throat> this exact same time, it'll just be an ask, your, ask Pamela anything again. Thank okay. you. You are so very welcome, and I'm so excited to see everybody. If you all want to unmute and wish Emma a very happy birthday. Happy um, birthday! Happy birthday, Emma! Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. Thanks, Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, Pamela. 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 Bye,